to a scientific discipline. I knew there were asteroids that were circulating between Mars and Jupiter. And there must be, from what I could learn, there must be millions of them. And I was sure that occasionally they must have bumped into the Earth and that in doing so, they would become a force in geology. Now, that I'm not so much interested in the eight or 15 or 20 that have been seen to cross the orbit of the Earth in the last few decades. What I'm interested in is what has gone on before this. If this has happened in 30 or 40 years, what's happened in 30 or 40 million years? Would there be 18 or 20 million of them that have crossed the orbit of the Earth? And did they all miss the Earth? And while we were talking, suddenly, the sky just split wide open, a fireball uh, like which I've never seen before or since. Uh, came down and I, I was so full of the subject I had been thinking the last few weeks, I reached in my pocket and got hold of a crayon and I marked a place on the sidewalk. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm going to try to find that fellow. And he laughed. He said, you, you think something came to earth? Yes, I think so. I feel sure of it. Well, where? Well, I said, you saw where it where it disappeared, didn't you? I said, somewhere out in that direction, about 150 miles from here, and then he laughed again. He said, I know now you're kidding. I said, no, I'm, I'm serious. Until the 19th century, few in the Western world believed stones fell from the sky. In 1894, the Anagito meteorite was brought from Greenland to New York City. 34 tons of it, the largest displayed meteorite in the world. After millions of years in space, this iron nickel body fell to Earth. Called the Willamette Iron, few meteorites are as impressive as this 14 ton specimen. Going up. <laughs> In 1947, another impact in Siberia was certainly the result of a huge meteorite. A scientific expedition to the Sokotaline Mountains found hundreds of small craters formed by meteorite fragments. Pieces of iron nickel body were found 26 feet below the surface. This fragment weighed 770 pounds. This larger one weighed 1,650 pounds. Although not always easy to recognize, the surface of the Earth bears many structures that appear to be impact craters. The energy released by impact of a large meteorite collision staggers the imagination. Tremendous shock waves surge out from the impact. These shock waves compress material to high densities and distort the rock layers. At the turn of the century, a mining engineer, Barringer, identified Meteor Crater in Arizona as the impact site of a giant iron-nickel meteorite. 
Dave Roddy of the U.S. Geological Survey explains what he and astrogeologist William McCauley have learned about Meteor Crater. 20,000 years ago, in this particular area, there was a large iron-nickel body traveling approximately 10 kilometers per second. It impacted the area and created an enormous shock wave into the ground as well as into the meteorite itself. The meteorite, because of the shock wave passing through it, broke into many, many fragments. It was on the order of 60,000 plus tons in size or in weight and on the order of about 80 feet in diameter. The meteorite itself, as it was broken up, was in injected actually into the crater walls with much of it also being thrown outside of the crater. Consequently, we have no large single mass remaining. The final crater uh, was approximately 4,100 feet across and over 600, nearly 700 feet in depth, with structural deformation below that another 1,000 feet. Specific characteristics are looked for in identifying a meteorite crater. Well, probably the most important single criteria that uh, was used at Meteor Crater is the fact that it is actually a big bowl-shaped crater. The uh, more specific elements have been the general deformation that you see in the rim of the crater, the large amount of material that's been thrown out of the crater, and the nature of the topography or the uh, rolling hills that you see around the, the crater itself. The Sudbury Basin in the Canadian Shield is an elliptical structure 26 miles long and 15 miles across. Earth scientists have often debated the basin's origin. But the presence of rock formations called shatter cones indicates the basin was a probable meteorite impact site. Shatter cones are associated with meteorite impacts. They can be found in Meteor Crater in Arizona, or associated with nuclear blast sites, areas of high energy explosion. The immensity of the shock required to produce these shatter cones suggests that the Sudbury Basin had its beginning as the location of a meteorite impact. The Canadian Shield is a chronicle of ancient meteorite craters. Manicouagan Crater near Sadeel in the province of Quebec. Its beginnings go back 200 million years. In the same province, the new Quebec Crater has seen the advance and retreat of more than one ice age. The Brent Crater in Algonquin Park houses two lakes. Sediments date its creation 400 million years ago. These pockmarks have survived in the Canadian Shield because the hard granite is very resistant to erosion. Arizona's meteor crater is, geologically speaking, very young. Yet, within a few million years, erosion will have made it difficult